In this lesson, we're going to simplify algebraic fractions by identifying the highest common factor. So to begin with today, we need to remember how to factorize algebraic expressions to progress onto fractions. So we're going to factorize 3x plus 9. And the common factor of both terms is 3. So we have 3 times x and 3 times 3 to make the 9. 3 is common to both, so we can put 3 on the outside, and we're left with x plus 3. So this expression matches with this expression. For the next one, we have x squared minus 9. To factorise this quadratic, we're going to write it in its general form. So we have x squared with no x terms, which is why it's missing here minus 9 are the constant term. So we need two values that multiply to make negative 9, but add to make 0. Well, the factors of negative 9 are 1 and negative 9, 3 and negative 3, and negative 1 and positive 9. 1 add negative 9 makes negative 8, and negative 1 add 9 makes positive 8, but 3 add negative 3 makes 0. So this is our pair. So we have x plus 3 and x minus 3. So this expression matches with this expression. Do you want to try and match up these two questions? You can pause the video and unpause it when you're ready. Okay, so with 3x squared plus 12x. 3 and x goes into both, so we can write this as 3x multiplied by x and 3x multiplied by 4. 3x is common, so we'll put this on the outside. And we have x plus 4 left. So this expression matches with this expression. And for the last one, we have x squared plus 6x plus 9. So two numbers that multiply to make 9, but add to make the 6, is going to be x plus 3 and x plus 3. So this is going to be x plus 3 squared. So this one, as you would expect, matches with this one. So let's begin with the main part of our lesson. Before we progress on to question A, let's think about why. 4 eighths simplifies to make 1 half. Well, we're going to look at a common factor, the highest common factor of the numerator and denominator, which is 4. So we have 4 times 1 over 4 times 2 to make 4 over 8. And you can see this simplifies by dividing both by 4. So this is why 4 eighths simplifies to make 1 half. And we'll use the same idea for question A. We're going to factorise the numerator, which is 3 lots of x plus 3, divided by 3 times 1. And you can see the 3s will simplify, or will cancel, which is why we're left with x plus 3. For question B, we have 12t minus 8. 4 is a common factor of the numerator. 4 lots of 3t minus 2 over this 4, which is 4 times 1. And you can see the 4s will cancel, so we're left with 3t minus 2. Do you want to try question C and question D? I pause them a video and you can unpause it when you're ready. Okay, for question C. We have xy minus wx over x. And the common factor in the numerator is x, because xy can be written as a product of x and y, and wx can be written as w times x. So x is common. We can put this on the outside. We have y minus w left. 
and that goes on the inside divided by x. We can simplify by dividing both by x, so we're left with y minus w. Okay, for question d, we have x squared minus 1 over x plus 1. We're going to factorise the numerator. We'll do this by writing it in its general form. So x squared plus no x times minus 1. Two numbers that multiply to make negative 1 are 1 and negative 1. And they add to make 0. So we have x plus 1, lots of x minus 1, all over x plus 1. And you can see now the common factor is x plus 1. So we can divide both by that. And we're left with x minus 1. Okay, do you want to try the questions on this slide um, by pausing the video and you can unpause it when you're ready. Okay, for question A, we have 14x plus 20h over 2. 2 is the common factor in the numerator, so we have 2 times 7x and 2 times 10h. So 2 goes on the outside, we have 7x and 10h remaining, all over 2. The t's will cancel, so we're left with 7x plus 10h. For question b, we have a plus b over 5a plus 5b. This time there's no common denominator in the numerator, but there is in the denominator. We can divide both by 5. So we have a plus b over 5 lots of a plus b, because this is 5 times a, and this is 5 times b. So we're left with 5 lots of a plus b. We can simplify this fraction by dividing both by a plus b. And anything divided by itself will make 1. So this will make 1 over, and this will cancel with this. So we have 1 over 5. Okay, with question C, we have x plus 2. And we can factorise the denominator. We'll do this over here. x squared plus 3x plus 2. Well, numbers that multiply to make 2 are 1 and 2. And they add to make 3. So we have x plus 1, lots of x plus 2. So we can put that back into our denominator. We have x plus 1 and x plus 2. And you can see we have a common factor of x plus 2. So that will become 1 over x plus 1. You want to pause the video and try question D and then unpause it when you're ready. Okay, for question D, we have TR plus 5R over T squared plus 8T plus 15. And we can simplify the numerator by taking out the R. So this is T times R and 5 times R. The R's will cancel. So we have R lots of T plus 5. And we can factorise the denominator. Two numbers that multiply to make 15 are 1 and 15, 3 and 5. 3 add the 5 it does make the 8. So we've got t plus 3, lots of t plus 5. You can see the t plus 5s will cancel. So we're left with r over t plus 3. Okay, this is the challenge question at the end. If you want to try this question by pausing the video and you can unpause it when you're ready. So we're going to show that this fraction can be written in the same form as this. And when we have written it in this form, we'll have a value for a, for b and for c. So we're going to factorise the numerator by taking out the 3. So we have 3 lots of y minus 1 over and we'll factorise the denominator where we have y squared minus 
2y plus 1. The factors of 1 are 1 and 1, but these do not add to make negative 2. But negative 1 add negative 1 makes negative 2, and it multiplies to make positive 1. So we have y minus 1 and y minus 1. You can see these two will cancel, so we're left with 3 over y minus 1. So going back to the form, we can see that a is equal to 3, b is the number before the y, the coefficient of y, so b is equal to 1, and c is equal to negative 1. Okay, thank you very much for watching, I hope you found that useful. And next lesson, we will be looking at how to add and subtract with algebraic fractions. Take care, and I'll see you then.